There are so many amazing Mario games out there that it was hard to just pick 10 and especially hard to rank them. But I've recently played all of these games within the last couple of years, so I have pretty recent experience with all of them. It has to be a Super Mario game where Mario is running and jumping around. So Super Smash Bros and Mario Kart won't make this list. That's for another day. It'll be interesting to see who agrees with my list and who doesn't. If you're a streamer or YouTube content creator and you want to react to this list, be my guest. Matter of fact, I welcome it. It'd be fun to watch what you guys think about my list. And if you don't have a YouTube channel, feel free to comment what you think. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts overall. I'm also not including Super Mario All-Stars or Super Mario 3D All-Stars because they are remakes of the games that I'm putting in here. Although I will say Super Mario All-Stars does an excellent job at improving the first three games. This took a lot of time and work on my end, so if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like and be sure to share the video as well. But without further ado, here are my top 10 Mario games of all time. I don't think it would be right to have a top 10 Super Mario games list without the original being in it. Super Mario Bros released all the way back in 1983, yes. It's that old, it's ancient at this point. It came out in a different time. In the 80s, everyone was going to arcades to play video games, and this was the hit game. When Super Mario Bros. came out, it changed the video game industry forever. It introduced us to so many iconic Mario characters that we know and love today, like Princess Peach, Bowser, Luigi, Goombas, Koopa Troopas, getting the mushroom power up. What helped Mario Bros. out in the start was that when you died, you didn't go back to the very start of the game like you did in most arcade games. Not only that, but it's fun as hell to run around as a red plumber man, going and stomping on Goombas and getting from point A to point B. The reason why I have it so high on the list is that yes, it's aged and also they've improved on their games since, so I feel like 10 is a good spot for it. Now let's fast forward 26 years into 2009. Super Mario Bros. Wii offers some of the most fun couch co-op gameplay you'll ever experience. This is the first Super Mario Bros. game that allows four players to play at one time. Mario, Luigi, Blue Toad, and the very much memed Yellow Toad. When this game came out, we just had to buy it. 12 year old me absolutely loved this game. I have so many awesome memories playing with family and friends. There are so many fun and interesting items in that one. A couple that come to mind are the propeller mushroom, and the Mega Mushroom. Although 4 player in this game is super fun, it can also be super chaotic and can also give you a headache. There's always that annoying somebody who goes off in the distance without everybody and makes everybody else turn into a bubble. You're also jumping on each other's heads and basically killing each other for however long you play. But overall I think this was a great reboot and a great rebirth of the franchise. I have it at number 9 because I feel like there are better 2D platformers in the series, but I cannot deny that this game is a blast and it is a must play. Coming in at number 8, I have Super Mario 3D World. I hear mixed things about this game, for sure. People either love it or they hate it. Um, I would say I really, really like it. I think it is really fun. It's basically Super Mario Bros. Wii, but 3D. I would put this slightly above Mario Bros. Wii because the four-player co-op is a little bit less frustrating. With more space to maneuver, you're not constantly jumping on top of each other's heads. The level design in this one is pretty sweet. I think the cat power-up is really fun being able to climb up walls, scratch enemies, and climb up and collect things that you wouldn't be able to without the cat suit. My biggest issue with the game is that it doesn't really get too hard until about world 7 or 8. The game definitely holds your hand in the first couple of worlds, but the soundtrack is amazing and the gameplay is fun nonetheless. There's some interesting ideas that they put in this game as well, like that level where you duplicate your character multiple times, or the level where you have to kick soccer balls that are bombs into Bowser. The ice levels are fun, sliding into those ice shoes are pretty fun. But I would say it's the worst 3D Mario game, just because there's no exploration, it's very linear, and you only have one path to follow. But just because you only have one path to follow and there's no exploration doesn't make it a bad game, I really enjoy this game. The trolling aspect 
aspect is still there if you play those games for that. Like, you can throw people off the cliff. You can play as Princess Peach in this one, which is a nice touch. Each character that you pick will have a unique ability. Like, Peach can hover, Luigi can jump really high, Toads are really fast, and I think that adds a little extra to the game. Although this game is four player, I believe it's best with two or three players. I recently streamed this game and me and my viewers had a blast. I definitely have it as my worst 3D Mario game, but like I said, none of these games on this list are bad, they're all really good. The music is super upbeat throughout the game and I feel like this is definitely the happiest themed Mario. Even Bowser looks kid friendly in those cat ears. Cat Bowser is adorable and this whole entire game is adorable. It's not quite as fun as the other 3D Mario games, but it definitely is worth the try. And not to mention it has one of the best secret worlds any of the Super Mario games have to offer. If you ever get your hands on this game, I would definitely recommend getting all the collectibles so when you get to the end you can do all of the secret levels because they are some of the best levels that the game has to offer. This is fun. I can't get the checkpoint! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's go! Super Mario Sunshine at number 7 is definitely interesting because 12 year old Cody would have absolutely had Mario Sunshine top 3 or even number 1. It was like one of my favorite games as a kid. However, I played it recently and there's definitely some flaws to the game. Some of the amazing things about the game are the hub world, uh, Delfino Plaza is absolutely amazing. Totally pulls off the tropical island vibes and resort that it's going for. If I had to pick one game to live in in the Super Mario franchise, you bet I'm picking this one. It's also by far the most unique. All the villagers are so interesting and just really weird looking and odd looking, and it's definitely a really odd game. I think Flood is an awesome addition. The jetpack is fun, the super booster is fun, and the turbo booster is fun as well. And I feel like Mario Sunshine does a good job at utilizing these tools. I love the roller coaster area, I love the village, that's covered in slime. I love the windmill. I love the beach areas. I love all the secrets inside. I love the squid racing levels. There's so much to love about Mario Sunshine. The movement in Mario Sunshine definitely feels like an upgrade to Mario 64. And most of that is thanks to Flood. I love that Koopa Kid has a huge part in the story, although the voice acting in it is completely terrible. I love that you can ride Yoshi. As a kid, I love that different fruit uh, made Yoshi hatch at a different color. That's something that's such a nice little touch, especially for kids. Pink Yoshi was always my go-to. There are also a lot of interesting bosses and unique ways to kill them, which is an awesome thing for Mario. Mario Sunshine was definitely an upgrade to Mario 64 as far as the movement goes. Maybe some people disagree with that, but I think so. The camera was still not the best, uh, not that much of an upgrade from 64. I think my favorite parts of Mario Sunshine are when you find a secret level where Dark Mario takes your flood. Because those are some of the most challenging platforming levels in the game. You're so accustomed to having flood the whole time and being able to hover and glide, so when it gets taken away, it's a huge hit. You're definitely gonna have some fun with Mario Sunshine. However, there are definitely a lot of flaws in the game as well that I didn't really notice as a kid. A lot of the missions sadly feel like a chore, and some of the levels just are not fun at all. Like the level where you have to wash out all of the ooze in time, that one comes to mind very first. That level where you have to act like a dentist for that giant eel fish thing. Or even the level where you have to push a giant watermelon across a level with a bunch of things that want to flip it over. That level, oh my gosh, it's the worst. There are multiple levels where you have to get the star just by washing out the whole entire map. You just become a janitor. But overall, I still think Mario Sunshine is an amazing game with just a couple of flaws. It was my all-time favorite game as a kid, and it is still one of my favorite games. However, there are six games that are better. I wanna fight that Mario again. That's my boy. Well put, son. Next up on the list, we have Super Mario World. This game is iconic. One of the greatest 2D platformers of all time, hands down. There's so much iconic music in this game, and it's so iconic that people know the song, but they might not know the game that it's from. This game has really fun platforming. This game isn't too easy. It's not too hard either. It's like a perfect blend of challenge and fun. This is the best 2D art style out of any Mario Bros game in my opinion. Not to mention that Yoshi was introduced in this game. The iconic character Yoshi. The Koopa boss fights are awesome. The last level boss is arguably the best Bowser boss fight of all time. Iconic soundtrack, iconic gameplay, iconic art style. You cannot go wrong. 
with playing Super Mario World. Some people think it's the best 2D Mario of all time, and you know what? It's hard for me to disagree. It's honestly one of the best Mario games and one of the best games ever made. So I know what you're wondering, why do you have it so high on your list if it's such an amazing game? Well that's because the next six are just some of the best video games you can ever play. I think from six and below, you could tell me you think are the best, and I could see an argument there. From this game on, like, I could see an argument for why you think it's the best game, and I would say, huh, fair point. These are all just fantastic games. The Koopalings are excellent in this game, the boss fights are excellent, but the soundtrack and the art design are what make it stand out above the rest. Did you enjoy the gameplay and the core mechanics of the first Mario Galaxy game? If so, you are definitely going to love Mario Galaxy 2. Mario Galaxy 2 only improves gameplay-wise. They get even crazier with this one. It's pretty much a Mario Galaxy DLC with more innovative ideas. And of course, the second one brings Yoshi, our lovable dinosaur, to the game. Some of my favorite galaxies in the game are Haunty Hall's Galaxy, Supermassive Galaxy, and Throwback Galaxy. Throwback Galaxy brings back Womp's Forest from Mario 64, and it is just such an awesome galaxy. The music in this is so fire, and the music in this entire game is always so fire. Bringing a full orchestra into the game is just such a nice touch. It just makes the gameplay that much more enjoyable. It's true. In Mario Galaxy 2 and 1, the exploration is definitely limited, very similar to Mario 3D World. Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy 2 don't really need that. They don't really need that exploration. There are a couple of reasons why I have the original higher than number 2. My two main issues with the game is that 1, the hub world they didn't really care about in this one. It's much smaller and not as impressive. The original Mario Galaxy has a much better story and overall just has more charm, whereas Mario Galaxy 2 they focus more on the gameplay aspects and the fun side. So it's really what you prefer. I prefer the original, but both are absolutely amazing and you must play both. I'm just gonna come out and say it right now. Super Mario Bros. 3 is one of the greatest 2D platformers of all time. If not the greatest 2D platform of all time. I have Donkey Kong Country 2 slightly over it, but it is right there. Super Mario Bros. 3 is an upgrade to Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2 in every way. The level design, the graphics, the gameplay, the items, the soundtrack, the boss fights, everything. Everything in this game is a huge improvement compared to the other two. And this may be a hot take, but Mario Bros. 3 is better than Super Mario World. It's just more fun. I. I can't really explain it, it's just way more fun. I love the airships that you go into when you fight the bosses, that is amazing. And I just prefer the overall theme to Mario Bros. 3 over Super Mario World. Super Mario World is right there with it, but I just prefer this one. They introduce so many iconic items to this game as well, like the Super Leaf, the Tanuki Suit, the Magic Wing, the Frog Suit, the Hammer Suit, and Goomba's Shoe. I love the castles, the dungeons, the diverse worlds, the toad shops. I just felt more accomplished after beating Mario Bros. 3 than I did with Super Mario World. I feel like Super Mario Bros. 3 is the perfect amount of challenge, and it is slightly more challenging than Super Mario World. I love the art style, I love the graphics. Super Mario Bros. 3 has aged like fine wine, and I don't really see them making a better Super Mario Bros. game. Super Mario Odyssey is the smoothest, as far as gameplay goes, in any Mario game, and one of the smoothest games ever made. The movement is flawless in this game. The mobility that Cappy gives you is astonishing in this game. I've seen some of the crazy stuff that people do online in this game. It makes no sense how they can do it. Pretty much any jump Mario has ever had makes a return in this game, and it is just so great. Mario Odyssey makes it into this spot for the movement alone. You truly feel like you can make it anywhere in the game, and that is just so amazing. This is by far the most fun I've ever had moving Mario around. And there's just no denying that it is the best controlled Mario game. And if you don't think that's true, you're a boomer. It's so addicting to jump up in the air, throw Cappy forward, dive on Cappy, and use Cappy as a trampoline to boost yourself further. I also love the fact that there's like a thousand moons. I know that some people don't like that because it makes a lot of them easy and it kind of makes it feel kid friendly, but I like that there's variation in the challenges with the moons. Like some moons, you just have to walk into a bush 
and some moons you have to do these crazy tasks, and I think that's a really awesome concept. Yeah, it might be frustrating for speedrunners, but for people like me that just like to play the game for a long time, it adds replayability, and it makes it so I can play Mario Odyssey for a very long time without feeling burnt out or bored. I would have never thought I could be a giant dinosaur in a Mario game. I also love that there's multiple ways to get around the map. You can go into a pipe and go 2D and go up and around the mountain. You can go over the mountain just by going 3D and just like maneuvering super well. It's just there's so many options with the movement. The movement in this game, like I've already said, is just second to none. And also the soundtrack is super underrated as well. Maybe it's just because it's a new game, so the music isn't as iconic yet. Jump Up Superstar will be in my brain forever, I swear. It's never gonna leave my head. There are two issues that I have with the game. One is actually the Odyssey itself. I feel like the Odyssey kind of kills momentum sometimes when you have to sit in the Odyssey and wait a while. I know some people like it, but all the Odyssey is is just a loading screen to get from one world to the other. Also, some of the places that you go to kind of seem half-assed. Like, you have New Dunk City that is this amazing giant city, and then you have places like Cap Kingdom, Cloud Kingdom, and Lost Kingdom. Although I will say Ruined Kingdom is really sweet. It's so sweet. It's so awesome. That's probably the smallest one, but it's so epic, so I don't mind that one. I also love the Mushroom Kingdom at the end. Iconic, man. So great. Also, all the skins that you can get in this game are absolutely amazing, and I also love that coins play a big part, and the more special coins you get on the map means that you can buy more outfits. Oh my gosh, coins are useful in this game. You can get a Luigi suit, you can get a Mario Maker suit, there's just so many amazing outfits that you can get in this game, and I'm all for it. Not to mention the amazing Luigi's Balloon multiplayer mode. Oh my gosh, that is so much fun. So many people sleep on that. If you guys have Mario Odyssey, you gotta try that game mode. It is so much fun. It can be quite addictive. I just hope in future Mario games, they keep the gameplay and core mechanics of Mario Odyssey, but make it completely open world. Imagine that. The movement of Mario Odyssey on a grand scale like Breath of the Wild. Oh my gosh, we need that right now. We need that Nintendo. Get to it. If you have a Nintendo Switch, you are a fool not to get this game. I feel like as it ages and nostalgia starts coming in, it could end up being higher on the list, but for right now, I have it as number three. Fantastic game. <laughs> Now, if I were to do this list a year ago or so, I actually would have put Mario 64 much higher up on the list, like probably not even top five. However, my last stream and my last playthrough with it was one of my most fun streams I've ever had, and it made me remember how amazing this game truly is. Shame on me for thinking that it wasn't as good as I used to think it was. All you hear about Mario 64 in gaming media is that it's a great game, but it's aged. Yes, it has aged, definitely. The camera is awful. The graphics obviously aren't as good as some of the games now, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. It is one of the most iconic and most fun games you'll ever play. Let's start off with the hub world. The hub world is the greatest hub world in gaming history, hands down. Peach's castle, jumping through paintings to get to new worlds, absolutely amazing. It's definitely the best hub world of all time. Lethal Lava Land is one of my favorites. I love the little platforms where you have to punch off those bob bombs. Classic. Womp's Fortress. Classic. Jolly Roger Bay. Classic. Sandland. Classic. bob -Omb's Battlefield. Classic. Cool Cool Mountain. You can throw a freaking baby penguin off a mountain to its death. Classic. Big Boo's Haunt. Classic. Tiny Huge Island. Classic. You can kill a little caterpillar in it. It's tragic. Classic. Don't get me started with the soundtrack. The soundtrack is absolutely amazing. Everyone knows Mario 64 music. Everyone has heard it. Everyone knows the little menu song, right? Da 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 Everyone knows that. And who can forget the Dire Docks song? Come on, man. That is arguably the most iconic video game song ever. Getting Metal Mario is awesome. All the secrets to discover. For me, Mario 64 will always be a blast to play. One, because it's so nostalgic towards my childhood. And two, 
it's still fun. Not to mention how historic it was for gaming. Mario 64 was the first to truly master a 3D platformer. And so many gaming industries tried to follow its footsteps, but not many succeeded. It's just such a magical and charming game, and it makes me feel like a kid again every time I give it another go. Put Mario 64 on your bucket list of games you need to play before you die, because if you haven't played this game yet, you truly are missing out on a masterpiece. I didn't play Super Mario Galaxy until 2020, so I had no childhood connection or any type of nostalgia towards it my first time playing it. But I can say without a doubt, it is the greatest Super Mario game of all time. I can't really explain it. It's just pure bliss. I love the game because it really started everything for this channel. Maybe this is a hot take having Mario Galaxy at number one, but for me it's really not. Mario Galaxy started it all for the channel. I started streaming first in 2018 and it didn't really go well and the channel kind of just faded off and died. But in 2020 when the pandemic started and we all had to go into lockdown, I gave the channel another shot. I streamed Warzone for about a month and it wasn't getting any views ever. And then I streamed Mario Galaxy and the community was born. I remember just being so happy just having two to three people in my stream talking to me at once. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So that definitely helps its case. Just like Mario Galaxy 2, Mario Galaxy really lacks exploration, but once again, it doesn't need it because what's there is pure fun. The planets are so creative. Nintendo has definitely put their best creative work into Mario Galaxy, with some of my favorite planets being Honey Hive Galaxy, Space Junk Galaxy, and Toy Time Galaxy. I love that the hub world starts to become more alive and the music starts to ramp up as you go through the game. I also love the story of Rosalind and Luma. Mario Galaxy is by far the best story being told in any of the Mario games. It's hard to say why exactly it beats out all the other games other than it just makes me so happy playing it. And that's what gaming's all about, right? Just having fun and enjoying yourself. The orchestra in this game plays to the mood perfectly. When you're in an intense part of the game, the music will ramp up and become super intense. When you're in a beautiful part of the map, it will slow down and play this beautiful melody. Playing this game just warms my heart like watching a Pixar movie. It's just such a a lovely experience from start to finish. Not only is Mario Galaxy the greatest Super Mario game of all time, but it's a top 10 video game of all time for me, and the second best Nintendo game of all time to me, only behind Ocarina of Time. If you have not played Mario Galaxy yet, you need to buy it. You're really doing yourself a disservice not playing this game. Ah. Welcome! Welcome New Galaxy! Thank you so much for playing my game.